What's up, everyone? Alex here. So last year, I had this topic that I was kind of ruminating on called death and video games. It was supposed to talk about our relationship with games and death at the same time. The main reason because one of my closest friends actually passed away last year, and I couldn't really figure out a good vehicle to talk about it because not a lot of people talk about video games and death in the same sentence. Like, if you think about death in video games, it's very inconsequential. There's really no finality these days. Like, especially in most games where you barely see any sort of game over screen. Like, even in games like Souls Likes and stuff, like, they'll declare that you died and then all of a sudden you're alive once again. But I grew up in an era where, in the 80s specifically, that death has a finality to it. There were no continues, barely, if any. And we had to really make our time with the game count, whether it's through the arcades with our tokens and quarters or the actual games themselves, because they're just going to force you to go all the way back in the beginning. I remember playing one of my favorite Famicom games of all time and Mike Tyson's punch out and ruminate ruminating on the fact that I had to restart the game all the way through the beginning. Like, yes, there, there's passwords and stuff, but you still needed to earn the right to get to those checkpoints, those passwords. And, you know, basically, like, what I'm trying to say here is that at the time that I thought about this video, it wasn't too relevant. And maybe that was, like, the wrong approach. And then I find myself here in 2024, about three months in, and there's some really important people in the JRPG community, like, just passing on, right? To, let me name you some names. Yoshitaka Murayama, he created Suikoden, and he was directing Aiden Chronicle 100 Heroes, which is coming out in April. He passed away very recently. Mutsumu Inamada who is the character designer of the Tale series, who actually passed very recently as of this recording. He did the character designs for Tales of Destiny 1 and 2, Eternia, Rebirth, Tempest, Innocence, Hearts, Graces, Zillia 1 and 2, Zisteria, Berseria, Crystoria. If you've played a lot or even a few Tales games, I'm pretty sure you've played at least one of these. And of course, the biggest one, which is Akira Toriyama, who of course created Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, and was part of games thanks to Dragon Quest and his involvement in Chrono Trigger, which is one of my favorite JRPGs of all time. And with this passing, it made me revisit this idea of death. And the reason why I originally wrote this, or made this or wanted to make this is because I started thinking of how many people out there have no one to talk to about this, have no one to talk about death. And I know that some of you actually shared your stories with relatives, like whether it was, you know, through like me asking you about your memories through Final Fantasy or even just like, you know, memories with video games in general. I am and and keep in mind like vid video games and death, like I don't think anybody's ever interested or feel that they are an expert at death and video games and death and life like who 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 can say themselves who can say that they are right like i can't say that i am but i'm hoping that by sharing a couple of stories that i've had with death maybe it can make it easier for you to kind of deal with some of the losses that we've had in the game industry. And loss can be so varying, right? It's either a loss of a job or the loss of someone that you really cared for and loved. And for me, like, I've had at least two people who are gamers who actually, like, had passed on and, um, and I wanted to share their story because I feel like that they need to be heard, right? And again, this is completely unscripted. I had the script for uh, just to remind me of, you know, the names of the people who passed on and, of course, like my old script. But for the most part, this is very much spontaneous. I just wanted to make this because, like I said, I want to 
give you guys like an opportunity to kind of voice your own feelings and emotions because this is a lot. This this is a lot to kind of take in for anybody, especially if you're a fan of JRPGs. So the and and to kind of give you a little bit of concept context, excuse me. Um, I am 44 years old, turning 45 this year, and a lot of you guys think that I'm like in my early 20s or late 20s, so I'm getting up there, and I feel like this is kind of a unique position because I'm starting to see a lot of my friends pass away, like, you know, not like a whole bunch of them, but like, think you know, a time and place that you kind of notice that people start stop talking, and it's quite unnerving. And I wanted to kind of share my experience, but also like to talk to you guys about this because it is can be difficult. And I want to share with you what I've learned as well. So the first person that I want to talk about is my friend Chris. And Chris's videos are actually up online um, on the Games and Me channel. This is a channel that I created many, many, many years ago. This was actually my very first, like, YouTube channel ever. It was supposed to be a group effort. There was a bunch of people that I gave the channel to, and, of course, it hasn't been updated since, but that's okay. That's not the point. But what I remember Chris, you know, asking Chris to do was to basically create this thing called the Community Question of the Week, which is a just a question that he would ask people every single week and give his own insights with. And this unexpectedly um, became a a really intimate insight into his life. Because you see, like, I've known Chris since we were at Funko Land, if you remember that. Fun- he was my manager. He hired me as a, you know, one of those, you know, regular people. <laughs> I don't remember the the cashier, I suppose. Um, and we've been really good friends since. But what people actually don't know is Chris was a very quiet guy. And, you know, he would do the weirdest things. Like, I don't know if you all remember the movie based on, off of Battleship, you know, the board game. I think Liam Neeson is in it. He, I remember talking to him and he basically came, uh, like hang to hang out with me. And I asked him about Battleship and he said, like, it was an all right movie, it was pretty fun. And I couldn't believe it because everybody panned that movie. It was like, man, it's terrible, blah blah blah. But he always had a smile on his face. He said, like, it was super entertaining, it was dumb, but it was super entertaining. And I love that about Chris because the thing about Chris that I that really will strike you is that even though that he's quiet. He always had this, you know, feeling that he wanted to love everything that he's consuming, whether it's bad or not. Like, he was able to toe the line between something that's really exemplary, like, really, really good, and something that is very, like, deserves criticism, but he still enjoyed it anyway. And I've always been fascinated about that idea. And I remember, you know, like, him hearing about the rumors about, like, Final Fantasy... 7 Remake actually happening and stuff. And he was actually really excited for it. He said he didn't care, like, how it basically turned out. Um, I remember us talking about, um, you know, Bioware, because Bioware is one of his favorite development companies. And there were rumors that they were making, like, this kind of robot kind of MMO kind of thing, and which turned out to be Anthem. Um, and, you know, just really, truly being excited about games, whether they're really good or really bad. And, you know, the thing that I, and that's something that I really just grew to admire about him. He was such a different person in that respect. And, you know, I remember I messaged him one summer, like, and said something along the lines of, like, I'm playing, you know, the Yakuza game or something like that, or another Yakuza game. And, you know, and he thought, like, it was was pretty cool, you know, like, and then a few weeks later, I got a random message on Facebook from his brother, of all people, and I was told that he passed away. Um, He had a heart attack in the middle of work, in the middle of his shift, like, his heart just gave way. And I was shocked. Because literally, we were talking about Yakuza, like, just a weekend before, like, on PSN. It was very, um, unassuming, very untimely. And so, 
I remember telling my partner that and just being in shock. And a lot of things happened during that time um, that I really don't care to like cover because it's really outside of the bounds of this video. But there was a time that I had a friend who I thought it was a friend um, basically took offense that um, I was prioritizing my grief towards my friend of many, many years since 2000 um, over our own friendship because I, I, even though I told him like I needed time to grieve, um, this is somebody who I made a podcast with for like 10 years who didn't understand what was going on. Um, and so I had to break my friendship with him uh, because he just refused to talk to me because I was grieve in the middle of grieving and, you know, he couldn't understand why I needed the time. Um, and so I remember booking the flight. It was only like for about a couple of days or something. And I had this very long um, eulogy that I'm not really sure if I wanted to to read this, but I'm, I think I have to. So... I th I'm going to I'm going to try to look for that eulogy so that you guys can actually understand like what he's all about because I think it's important. <sighs> okay, okay. Um, here I found this is the um, the eulogy that I read him, and I, I do apologize if this is um, this is a bit. <laughs> is a, this, I, I apologize if this is a bit, and maybe I should have put a trigger warning, but uh, in front of this video. But um, anyways, I'm sorry in advance. So this is what I read him, and this is in front of people. I didn't read all of it because there were people who aren't gamers, but you get to um, you get to listen to this and you get to hear it. Good morning, everyone. My name is Alex, and I've known Chris for a better part of two decades. Chris used to be my manager at Funko Land, a video game store in Northridge. Early on, I wondered about him as he was always adamant about making sure that we met our responsibilities as his employees. But even then, he was always a man of a few words. The more I work. The more I worked with Chris, however, the more I found him to be a good-natured, rational, and more importantly, passionate man about video games. That's when I knew that I wanted to be friends with him. In the course of the next several years, Chris would get to meet my friends, people who loved video games as much as, I, as he did. I, I, the, bet, the writing needed to be better. I guess I knew how to, how to pause and stuff. Um, over time, this began encompassing a love for movies, theme parks, and just generally loving life itself. Chris loved being a part of every crazy adventure we could, we could come up with, as he wasn't just merely being a bystander as things unfolded. Rather, he became a willing participant, experiencing things and allowing himself to form his own feelings and thoughts about it. One of the absolutely insane things Chris and I did was when we both decided to use our Universal Studios season passes and visit the park one random Saturday. Seeing that it was going to be pouring rain that day, I thought it'd be fun to just run through all the park's rides to see if we could potentially ride every single ride by lunchtime and get back to my place and play video games. We managed to clear every single ride on the upper lot in record time, to which meant that our mission was halfway done. We needed only to ride the rides in the lower lot, which included the Mummy Roller Coaster, the Transformers rides, both of our favorites at the time, and the Jurassic Park water ride. But seeing as I am the worst person to check the weather, I had neglected to check if, oh, say, hail would be part of the equation. Shortly after we took the escalators down to the lower lot, it became it began hailing hard. We quickly sought shelter by riding the mummy ride, and after getting out, we saw that the hail had finally stopped. 
I noticed that the Jurassic Park ride was stopped as well, and instead of giving up riding it, I looked over to Chris and said, Did you still want to go on the Jurassic Park water ride? And he replies, Are you serious? And laughing at the absurd suggestion, Always, I replied. So we lined up, being the only two people present, as the employees looked at us thinking we were insane. They said, we have to make sure that it won't hail anymore, then we have to push the you know, then we have to push broom the hail off the boats. I replied, do we have to, but we're getting on this ride. Eventually the ride got back up and running, and for its first trip since the hail, we were the only two people who rode the ride. I wish I had a photo of us falling down from the final drop to prove that we were the only ones on it, but we did get a photo of the boats being push broomed. Now, this love of life, adventure, and whimsy was a huge part of Chris's everyday life. It's why he indulged himself in so many movies, books, anime, cartoons, comics, video games, and anything that could tell an engaging story. And together, we got to experience some of the best stories, whether it was in the virtual realm or the real or in real life. Now, I don't know if any of you know this, but Chris is a battle-hardened veteran of war, having fought many battles, from the Covenant in Halo to the Reapers in Mass Effect. Chris loved the sci-fi world of Halo, and every opportunity he got, he would tell me, on his own volition, I never prompted him, how wonderful the story was, and would regale me of tales of Master Chief, the hero. But it wasn't until Mass Effect came into our lives that I was able to learn about Chris a bit more. You see, the true magic of games lies within the important decisions you make for each crucial story moment, and how it affected your personal story. When talking about Mass Effect, he'd tell me how he, in the role of Commander Shepard, had spared the Rachni Queen, an evil-looking insect creature who could control people's minds, and how Chris thought she was a victim of malice, or how he'd try his best not to let the game force him to eliminate one of his squad mates who felt that he had wronged them somehow. Chris would rationalize, We all sometimes get caught up in the heat of the moment, and it's difficult to be rational during that. And this was Chris in a nutshell. He cared for people so much that he'd work really hard to not only see their point of view and understand them, but to forgive and appreciate their impact in his life. And if I may, I'd like to indulge you with one last tale. It is a tale that once again happens at Universal Studios. I asked my friends to join me at the park on my birthday in 2012. The people who went with me happened to be among us today. Me, Ted, Rachel, Christian, and, of course, Chris. While I enjoyed my time with them, what they failed to realize was that I was going to turn the tables on them later that day by giving each of them a present in honor of many years of friendship. I read this to Chris when I handed him his present. Chris, the closest to a brother I've ever come to have and gaming buddy, thank you for sticking around with me through thick and thin and joining me in the most randomest of times. You're always there when I needed you, and the laughter and times we've shared will endure forever. May this gift remind you that regardless of where we were then, now, or in the future, that I will be by your side whenever you need to be. I know that somewhere out there, Chris is smiling at all of us, thinking of how wonderful it is to see everyone gathered here today. Much like his character's namesake, he has gathered us here not only to honor his being, but to share stories of him with one another, hopefully forming new bonds that go well beyond this sad day. To me, this is Chris's parting gift, and I can honestly say that it's been both an honor and a privilege to have met each other and, and every one of you. Thank you, Chris. So, it's kind of interesting because, like, I never really truly realized how much Chris affected me during that time. This was 2018 when he passed, and this was only about a year into Backlog Battle. And ever since that point, I remember just vowing and just promising that I would do an endeavor to be who he was for us and other people, which is to always try to find what's fun in games, no matter how difficult it was. Because he would always try to find like the fun in everything, not just games, but also movies and TV shows and comics. 
And yes, he had some critiques on there. He realizes that nothing is perfect, but he was the kind of guy that still had fun. And I felt like even at the time, I remember being like just so moved by Chris that I remember like there was so much negativity in video games and they're still here. The negativity is still there and people have made careers out of them. And I vowed that I would basically like just not go that direction like if i ever made and continued this youtube channel it would never go into that moment of negativity now a lot of people would say like oh but isn't that like variety there's many other ways to create variety in a channel and i don't want to talk about the specifics of that because that is outside of you know the scope of this conversation but the point is that while i grieved my friend's loss I used his memory and the feelings that I had, you know, hearing of his passing as fuel to create what we have right now here on Backlog Battle. And not only that, to embody and honor his spirit by striving to be a person who just loved life just as much as he did and loved experiencing new things because as many of you know, video games are very difficult to make. And the fact that one gets made, you know, like every other time or so, like it's through the hard work of many, many people and working in tandem. And that is, you know, quite an impossible feat a lot of the time with huge budgets and, 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 and it's suffering its own method of loss right now, right? With all the layoffs. And with the passing of these JRPG legends, I just couldn't find it in my heart not to talk about death because there is a permanence in death. You know, whenever I, and this is very difficult for me to even admit, but like when Chris passed, like I actually made a choice not to remove him from my friends list. I know that sounds really stupid, but like, you know, on PSN, the very last message that I sent him on PSN is still there. It's still there. It hasn't changed. I I did, you know, ask Facebook to memorialize his account. And, you know, they did, thankfully. But they're, you know, and this might, you know, this might sound morbid, but like, just the reminder that that friendship happened, like, makes me actually happy. It makes me, you know, proud to, to have known somebody who is so, you know, I don't want to say he's innocent because he's not, but so honest and pure may be the, the right or wrong word, but it's just making me think about like all the good memories we had, like me and my friend Christian and Chris, I know that sounds confusing, just, you know, going out, having fun, playing video games or just hanging out at my place. It's just a blast. And, you know, I know that a lot of you guys are feeling all sorts because of all these passings. But also, it might bring you um, memories of people that have passed on in your life. And I think the way that I'm going to end this is that ask yourself, how do you want to honor those people's memories? Whether it's people who are close to you or people who are distant from you, who have inspired you, like Akira Toriyama and, you know, the creator of Suikoden and the character designer for Tales. Like, how will that inform you moving forward? Because I think it's important to ask because, you know, I think, you know, Steve Jobs said, you know, in his commencement speech, like, death is kind of like a change agent. It ensures that the old pave the way to the new. And how we're, how are you going to basically continue their legacy somehow in your own little way? And for me, you know, just reading through this eulogy again, it kind of makes me realize that... Chris is kind of living on in a way like through this channel the spirit of him is living through this channel and I know it sounds like very hoity-toity very spiritual and stuff like that but um there's no logical answer to death um people have tried for years and maybe in the future we'll find something but as of right now like you know we have to go through it eventually we'll have to go through it the more we get older, the more things happen. And I just want us to think about what kind of legacy we're leaving this world um, and how people are going to talk about us. And honestly, like, I'm I'm just trying, you know, for my part, I'm, I, I'm here for you. 
if you have any feelings about this, leave a comment. Um, and let's talk about it. I've ranted long enough. I don't even know if I'm coherent, but I hope that you've at least gotten something from this video. Because again, this is completely unscripted. I just wanted to talk th about this because, you know, whether it's, you know, those three people that I mentioned or somebody close to you, like, death is a pretty big deal. There is no continue button in real life. But there is a way to kind of continue their legacy, much like, I guess, a roguelike, <laughs> for the lack of a better comparison, and continue espousing ideas, their ideas, and making their ideas live on for the world to enjoy. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.